From the moment of spermate fusion, a human zygote acts as a complete whole, with all the parts of the zygote interacting in an orchestrated fashion to generate the structures and relationships required for the zygote to continue developing towards its mature state. The zygote acts immediately and decisively to initiate a program of development that will, if uninterrupted by accident, disease, or external intervention, proceed seamlessly through the formation of the definitive body, birth, childhood, adolescence, maturity, and aging, ending with death. The coordinated behavior is the very hallmark of an organism. So there's a whole set of coordinated behavior that begins at fertilization that was not happening when we had the egg and sperm uh, in isolation. She goes on to say, mere human cells, in contrast, are composed of human DNA and other molecule, human molecules, but they show no global organization beyond that intrinsic to cells in isolation. A human skin cell removed from a mature body and maintained in the laboratory will continue to live and will divide many times to produce a large mass of cells, but it will not reestablish the whole organism from which it was removed. It will not regenerate an entire human body in culture. Although embryogenesis begins with a single cell zygote, the complex, integrated process of embryogenesis is the activity of an organism. So embryogenesis is an activity of an organism, not the activity of a cell. None of us can claim having once been an egg. None of us can claim having ever once been a sperm. But we all can claim having once been a toddler, an infant, a fetus, and an embryo. Of course, the zygote being the very early embryo. So from fertilization onwards, there is no nature or substantive change to each of us. There's just an appearance change and an ability change. So going back then to the, the timeline I mentioned, let's look at what some of those changes in our appearance and ability are in order to consider whether they should be what determine our humanness or our value. One of the changes or differences between life before birth and life after is one of size. Obviously, the preborn child, especially in the stage of the zygote, is extremely small. But over that nine month period, size is changing. Now, the next difference between life before birth and life after birth is that of level of development. The preborn child, indeed, is very dependent on the mother's body for survival. Over nine months, like size, however, development, uh, sorry, Jesse dependent or development? Now I'm confusing myself. <laughs> Anyways, development is what I want to focus on. But over the nine months, the development of that child is going to change. The child is going to get physically more developed. The child is going to get intellectually more developed. And some people will say, because the child maybe doesn't have a heartbeat yet, because that begins at three weeks, or maybe doesn't have brain waves yet, and the earliest brain waves have been recorded at six weeks, or maybe you know the lungs aren't developed, or the child can't feel pain, and on and on and on people will go, they will say it's not a human yet. But development is something that doesn't, let me put it this way, once fertilization happens, what is going to occur from that point forward is a change in development, but our human humanity is not defined by how developed we are. It's defined by what species we are, namely who our parents are. So the fact that the preborn child is less developed than a newborn child doesn't mean the preborn child isn't a human or isn't a person. It just means it's an immature human in comparison to the older individual. The next difference between the preborn child and the child after birth is one of environment, or even the child within the womb prior to uh, for, or prior to implantation. Of course, is in the environment of the fallopian tube. Then, at implantation, is in the environment of the uterus. And then, of course, after birth is in multiple different environments. And then there's the difference of dependency. People will say that the child, indeed, very early in pregnancy, is highly dependent on the mother's body for survival. But unlike size or development, dependency is something that decreases over time. Now, in order to test whether any or all of these criteria are good criteria to determine one's humanity or personhood, look at the period of time between your own birth and your present age and ask yourself what's changed. And what's changed are those same four things, right? Your size continues to increase, your physical and intellectual development changes, your environment is constantly uh, altered, and finally, the dependency you have on another person for survival is decreasing. 
So the question we have to ask people who wanted to find humanity based on any of these criteria is if they would ever consider a two-year-old to be a non-person or not a human simply because the two-year-old has not gone through the developmental level of puberty like a 20-year-old has. And they will say, no, that's ridiculous. You can't deny someone their humanity based on development. Well, likewise, it's equally ridiculous to deny the pre-born child her humanity simply because for the first three weeks she doesn't have a heartbeat and on and on. We can go with illustrations.